Hey there, and welcome to Ryan's demo, where I'll explain how interior designers and architects use Ryan to create full architectural drawing sets faster than ever. In this walkthrough, we'll explore all the features that set Ryan apart from other design software. We'll start with its all-in-one design to presentation workflow. You'll see how you can go from technical, accurate design to stylized, beautiful, client-ready presentations with mood boards and more. We'll take a look at how you can add metadata onto your drawing set, making Ryan more than just a drafting tool, but where you can actually manage your schedules, specifications, and aggregate information with just a few clicks. We'll also explore Ryan's block library, containing more than 10K blocks in top, front, and side views for sections and elevations that you can drag and drop directly in your drawings. Last but not least, we'll see how Ryan's web-based nature enables teams to collaborate in real time in the browser, speeding up their workflow and improving communication across all stakeholders. So let's dive in to see how all these features come together to help you create polished, professional, perfect architectural drawing sets faster than ever with Ryan. So we're starting off by just reviewing a typical drawing set made in Rail. And you'll see that this includes, you know, site plans, floor plans, mood boards, elevations, uh, details. You can really create any type of documentation you're looking to create. And typically it all starts from an import. You can import DWG, DXF, PDF, and images into Rail and then redesign them and also draw from scratch, of course. So let's see how this would be done for this project. I'll go to our layer panel and here in RAM, the way we work is we have multiple what we call canvases. This is the paper canvas where I create my presentation. And in the model canvases, I draw my building, my apartment, my design detail. Uh, so as you can see here, we have site plans in one model, floor plan in another, elevations, design details, FFNE uh, boards. Um, and I also have here an import file that I've prepared for you and for the sake of this demo. So this is maybe how, uh, you know, beginning starting point looks like when you import a file in RAM. Once you import a DWG or a PDF, they're going to become vector lines that you can then edit. Uh, if it's a DWG, you're even going to inherit all the layers your DWG had and the blocks. So you're starting off at a very comfortable and flexible point to uh, draw your project. Now let's uh, zoom into this drawing and see how you can use RAM's different tools uh, to re-edit a floor plan. So on the bottom here, you're going to find what we call the drawing and editing tools. Uh, some of them are the classic tools that you know from other design software like polyline, line, rectangle, um, guideline, and so on and so forth. You also have editing tools. So offset, trim, mirror, fillet, all of these classic tools are available here. You're also going to find here, obviously, dimensions, leaders, arrows, text, everything you need to convey information. And before we dive in, I just want to make it very clear that you're drawing precisely in RAN, even though you're going to get your drawing to a very high and rendered and beautiful presentation. It all starts with uh, nitty gritty, uh, you know, wireframe grid kind of drawing where you're drawing uh, to a T. So I always like to activate these um, to make everyone coming from other design tool realize that it's as accurate as well what they know. Alongside the wireframe and grid mode, you're going to find here our snapping, of course. Um, and then also there is RAN units. You can change between metric to imperial, millimeters to feet and inches. Everything can be done here, including changing the precision and editing the suffix and such. So now that we have that established, I'll disable the wireframe and grid mode. And let's continue reviewing the bottom toolbar to the part we didn't get to yet, which is what we call the light beam features of RAM. So here you're going to find uh, walls, zones, openings, and instead of drawing with line work, RAN enables you to draw uh, wall entities, actually. Uh, so instead of, you know, drawing walls and then offsetting them and so on and so forth, this is more of a streamlined kind of process, helping you draw wall enclosures faster. These are, of course, editable and they snap and they just give you the dynamic flexibility that you need. Uh, so just to demonstrate this, you can see how you can change the well here. And of course, you can be also very intentional uh, and use the unit input. So let's do centimeters. All right. The other thing about these walls is that you can edit the style. And actually, it's not just for walls. It's for different entities on the RAM canvas. I'll select these to show you an example. Uh, once I select these walls on the right, there's going to be the style panel that appears. From here, I can change wall thicknesses. Let's do this maybe less, actually 15 centimeters. Um, we can change the wall fill uh, and look. So currently it has this hatch. And in RAM for styling, we have in-app 
patches. We have in-app textures, and of course you can choose any color. All of these can be customized. So scale, their color can be changed, the rotation point, opacity, things that you typically would do as a afterthought of your drawing when you try to uh, beautify it, let's say that way, um, are done directly as we draw here, which makes it very, very efficient. So for now, let's go for maybe this just solid color and say that we like the style. We can also save our styles to create a style library. So clicking on the plus button, I'll call this um, internal wall. Um, you can call this, of course, you know, internal Gibson, give a spec of its width and so on and so forth. And once you do that, you are curating a style library. So as you can see here, I have a few typical type of walls that I use across my models and I can summon the walls and change the style with one click and also edit the styles across my model uh, in batch, which is very handy. Let's choose this style for now. And the next thing I want to show you is the zone tool. So once you use the RAN walls, you'll see that you can add zones with just a click within wall enclosures. This is super handy because the zone detects the shape of your wall enclosure and gives you a tag with its square meter count automatically. And we're going to talk about how this um, automatic square meter count is going to come in handy when we create schedules. But for now, we can leave it uh, like this. Again, here, you can definitely change the style of the zone. Let's show some of the textures we have in RAN. Um, so this can be, uh, you know, a wood texture, chevron, cement, tile, gravel, anything you'd like. Uh, for now, just for the demonstration, maybe let's add this wood. And again, everything is scalable and editable. You can be even more precise if you have an open space and you want to divide the zone in two, you have a zone divider enabling you to add multiple zones in uh, one open space, just as an example. And now that you get the gist of it, let's jump into a more advanced floor plan that's been processed already. All right, so as you can see, we've put in a bit of work and our model can become something like this. Uh, we've edited the style, the walls, added hatches, and we've also added some libraries. I want to introduce you to Rand's block library. So I'll just um, pan to this um, living room area and let's dive into the block library to populate this living room. You can find the block library on the top left and Rand's block libraries contains 10K blocks from front, side, and top views for sections, elevations, and floor plans. You'll see here a variety of use cases. You can find technical symbols like lighting, HCAV, uh, and others, and furnishing even people and accessories. You'll also note that you can curate your own personal libraries using RAM and import DWG blocks and existing blocks that you have or create new ones in RAM, uh, like I do here. You have organization level libraries, which is libraries that you can share with your team to make sure everyone is using a standardized uh, repository of libraries. And then here are the RAN ones I was mentioning. Let's use a search bar to show you a few options. So I like to show the technical symbols just to start off with. Um, I'll go to the libraries tab and there you go. So you see we have here electrical, HVAC, lighting symbols, plumbing symbols, safety symbols. So these really come in handy when you're creating technical drawings. But alongside these, you know, technical symbols, you also have lighting fixtures and furniture. Let's look for a nice configuration for this living room. I'll search for a lounge and note that you can search for either a room configuration like lounge, bedroom, bathroom, or an item, of course, like chair, sink, and so on and so forth. So this is just an example of the multiple blocks that we have in RAN. And you can already see that there is this family tab indicating that they also have their views in front and side. So I'll show you how to use that in just a bit. But for now, let's drag and drop a top view onto our canvas. And there you go. The blocks are, of course, already scaled and can be edited. If I double click them, I can choose to move them around, scale them, rotate them. I can even copy or delete some and so on and so forth. You can also add some specific materials. So if you're doing a very detailed presentation of your drawing, you can add materials, colors. All right, now let's see how this block would look in a side or front view. Just as an example, I'll copy this block and place it right here and then go to its definition on the right and change it to the view I'm looking for. In this case, it's going to be this one, for example. So to create sections becomes really faster when you have this repository. We can also jump to the elevation canvas right here and see that we've used some of our blocks here as well. So uh, window blocks, door blocks, um, and also, yes, people blocks uh, can be also placed in front and side views in RAM. 
All right, so after we've imported a file in Rayon, redesigned it and stylized it, added blocks, we're ready to add information to our drawing. So this is where Rayon is more than just a drafting tool, but actually where you can manage data in your project. So let's see how our table tool works in Rayon. You can use a table tool for multiple use cases. You can find it on the left right here. And the first thing that's going to happen when you create a table is you're going to get a list of all the elements on your canvas. These can be your walls, your blocks, your surfaces. So you can use this for doing ff &E schedules. You can use this for doing takeoff reports and specifications, feasibility studies, and more. So let's review how you can add information onto furniture blocks and quantify them using tables. The first thing I want to do is click on the three dots and filter my categories. What I want to leave here is just the block instances, which are the different windows, doors, elements I have on my canvas. Now let's add information onto these three beds in this residential project. If you have larger projects, you can do this at scale, of course. I'll start by uh, right clicking one block and go to select similar and same block. This will automatically save all the blocks I have on my canvas from the same type. And on the bottom right, I'll find their metadata properties. Some of our blocks uh, in Rayon have default metadata properties. You can already see here we have brand and category. Uh, we can leave the category in bed. Let's change the brand from generic to IKEA, for example. All right, now we can also add more properties onto our blocks by going to the Add Property tag, and you'll find some default properties by RAM. Uh, for example, we can add the price property. Um, we can also create custom properties, for example, a material uh, property. That we'll click on the plus button. Let's do material. Uh, and then the type can be text, number, length, volume, and more. All right, now let's add other than the brand of these beds, their price. Uh, you can change the currency, by the way, in your main menu. Let's mark each bed at 1000 euros. And for material, I think this one is a bit redundant for these beds, but basically if you're doing takeoff reports for finishes specs, this is where you can add tile, wood, and so on and so forth. So now that we have these few properties, let's go back to our table and add them onto the table itself. You can see here is where we can find those properties like price and brand. And we get a sum of all the, in this case, three beds we have here, their price, their count. We can add more information and then we can export this table into an Excel sheet and rework it with our project manager or clients. And again, this is super useful and need to quantify things with just a few clicks. Other than these types of tables, you can also make informative sheets with uh, visualizations. So your material visualization, some text to describe it, uh, mood boards that will help your clients understand your design intent. Uh, so these are all images that were brought directly onto the RAN canvas. Because we're working in a web-based uh, tool, you can literally copy paste images from across uh, the web into RAN. Let's do an example with Pinterest. All right, let's paste this image on our canvas. And I want you to know that RAN also has AI features that help you uh, create your mood boards. So when you click on an image and edit it, if you brought in a pixelized image, maybe one that you took on site, you can upscale it. In this case, it's pretty nice resolution. In this case, I think the background is nice and I want to keep it in my mood board. So we can just scale this and place it directly on. So now that we're pretty much happy and got to kind of the final step of creating our floor plans, adding, you know, uh, millwork, materials, information, we might be ready to set up our presentation. So I'll go back to our paper canvas. And just a quick reminder, I've placed all of my different design documentation and drawings on different canvases and then aggregated them in a paper canvas. I want to show you how to create sheets and add your drawings at different scales. So for that, I want to introduce the uh, RAN's page and view tool. The page tool is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to select a page and add it onto my canvas. Uh, I can then set its size on the right. So let's leave it at, uh, let's change it to A3 to match the other sheets on our drawing. Now I may want to reference a drawing at different scales on this sheet. So the way to do that is use a viewport and in RAN, a viewport will offer you a sneak peek into one of your other model canvases, which you can select on the right. 
In this case, maybe let's add a zoom in of one of floor plans. So we'll go to floor plans and double click it to edit its scale right here. All right, some things you can do with views is override their layers and their styles. And this is handy if you're creating, for example, construction and demolition floor plans and you need the same walls to be in different colors, or if you want to use one stacked floor plans with layers and then represent it each time in a different view. For example, right now we have our layer panel on the left representing the furnishing and flooring. We can hide this floor plan and then add the lighting floor plan. Uh, and as you can see, the view has changed. Uh, then we can lock our zoom and we have a sheet with the lighting floor plan. We can grab a title block. In this case, uh, we have some on our paper canvas. We can also find title blocks in Rand's block library. So you can either bring your own or customize ours uh, for your business. If you wanted to highlight a specific area, for example, you can always crop your view by clicking down the command toolbar. And maybe let's highlight the lighting of the click area of this drawing. I'm going to copy this view and then we have one view at one to 100. The second view, I'll jump in there and change the view to a more detailed one. Maybe out of the kitchen. And that's it. Here I can add maybe a legend or more information that I want to convey regarding my lighting plan. Once my drawing set is ready, I'm going to find all my pages on the left panel pages. And this is where I'll check that my presentation is ready, exhaustive, my pages are in order. I can then either export my floor plan. So classic export, PDF or PNG, you can choose a range of pages and make sure that your drawing set is um, ready. Uh, you have this magnifying glass to make sure that you're happy with the line weight and more. So you can export that and actually Ryan offers another option. Because we're a web-based tool, you can share your presentation online, which enables you to share a URL link to your stakeholders, so clients, contractors, instead of exporting a PDF file and sending it via email, all you have to do is publish your presentation and copy the link. Uh, once you share it with them, they'll be able to review your presentation and it will be a live representation of your model. So there is no version control issues or uh, confusion. So just walking through some of the pages we created, this is how the presentation mode will look. Other than that, the other benefits of being an online tool is the idea of being able to collaborate and invite teammates to work in real time. This is why RAN is great for teams working with architectural drawings. You can share your models with others. And in case you're an organization, you can have dedicated workspaces and resources to share across. Here you can see that this model is shared with me only. I can add my team members. So Arthur, Nadia, anyone else, and determine who's going to be admin editor or viewer of my model. In this case, we can work together in real time, speeding up the process of creating these architectural drawing sets. We can also create libraries and templates, enabling our team to work in a standardized uh, stack of blocks and of styles and streamlining the whole process. So by just toggling these, I can reproduce and really use easily the styles and blocks in this model across all of my other models. Let me show you how that looks like from the RAN workspace. So we'll go to the main menu and visit the workspace. So just a brief overview, you'll find in RAN you have personal projects, you can um, choose your favorites. We have hundreds of templates at your disposal to help you never start from scratch where you can take the styles, the blocks and more tutorials. And then if you do work as an organization, you'll find the workspaces that are shared across your team and help you streamline your work. Last but not least, note that we have various resources for you to get started with. We have our documentation, which is an exhaustive doc with everything you need to know about how to use RAN, including the RAN Academy, where you'll find various tutorials for different use cases you may be coming to RAN for. You can also reach out to us from the RAN app and on the bottom left, you'll find our live chat support. So feel free to reach out to us right here or book a demo with our team to learn more. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you have any more questions, you're welcome to book a demo with our team by using the link in the description. You can also join our community and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. Have a good one.